Amplifiez votre passion pour la guitare pour quelques euros par mois. Rendez-vous sur la chaîne guitare.com. Amplify your passion for the guitar for a few dollars per month. Head over to theguitarchannel.biz. Welcome to the Guitar Channel. Welcome to La Chaine Guitar. I am super happy to have you uh, a new um, a new guest on the the show. This is the one and only Yua Rokongas uh, live uh, from uh, Finland. Yua, how are you doing uh, today? Very good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Pierre. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you survive the Holy Couch uh, guitar show, which was just uh, last weekend? Still, still gasping my breath. Yeah, <laughs> <I think. laughs> it was quite. It was quite extreme. You want to know how my um, Sunday ended after the after the Holy Couch guitar show? After we posted the last things and we commented, and then I was, I felt like my head is exploding after. Uh, spending uh, the whole weekend and the and the previous week preparing previous week preparing all the videos and then the weekend nearly 24 7 mm -hmm. um, with the show and then then i just said yeah let's go let's go out for a walk with with emma and our son and so so um yeah so we went out to walk we have a river nearby so we we went there and we were there sitting by by a dock And our son was there playing a little bit on the dock, and and it's still, I mean, it's spring here, but it's the water is very, very cold, mm -hmm. and you can't mm -hmm. swim, really. Um, but then I ended up. Elias, our son, told me to go feel how cold the water is, and I so I go there to feel the water, and I have my best, pretty expensive glasses. Put here. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I can I see where this is river. coming. Okay. Yes. And I dropped them to the river. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh my God. What? How can I? So there, there's there's hardly no no stream in the river. It's very lazy, lazy river. So I'm thinking that what can I do? And I'm there going back and forth. How can we? What what are we going to do about this? And then um, Emma says that well, if we go, maybe we go get the car and you know bring your swimming glass or something and die. <laughs> so I, so we ended up going that's how my day ended we ended we, we we went back to the river and i dived into that <laughs> river okay the water was plus five degrees mm, nice okay nice and fresh <laughs> and i dived into the river twice in attempt to find my favorite glasses but i couldn't okay <laughs> Still angry about it, so, <laughs> but I felt very refreshed. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. I suppose to after a bath in a five degree uh, water in Finland uh, in the middle of spring, that's for sure. Yes. So yeah. for those who are wondering what we are talking about, uh, last weekend was supposed to be the um, Holy Grail guitar show, which is like the the the, the best luthier in the world coming to to Berlin to to showcase their work in acoustic, electric guitar, and so on. Obviously, it was cancelled because of the the pandemic regarding uh, COVID uh, COVID nineteen. And it was replaced by an online version that uh, you basically, uh, you, you were the one uh, who found the name, right? The Holy Couch uh, Guitar Show. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't know where you heard that. I, I haven't like, I haven't shouted about it much, but yeah, it, it, it just came to my mind that why don't we try to do something fun with the name rather than, you know, try to kind of lighten up because it, it has to be this kind of a show it's a spin-off and it's it needs to be put up with within such a short time frame mm. and i felt that we need some some humor yeah yeah definitely and more than ever we need the humor at the moment that's for sure and uh, yeah. i i was pretty uh, surprised by the amount of uh, high quality content that we are published during the weekend uh, yeah. obviously some people uh, already had some video prepared i know you prepared a lot of videos but uh, yeah. there were also a lot of uh, live broadcasts in youtube on instagram and uh, on on facebook and you also did a couple of lives was it uh, the first time you did uh, you were doing some live broadcast on on youtube yeah yeah so this was something that um my my i would call him my it mentor mm -hmm. 
Junnu Vuorela, Finnish guy who's been working with me for a long, long time, and is, I consider him as one of our team members. And um, he's been pushing me to do live streams on YouTube for a long time and take the perspective, you know, the guitarist's perspective to those videos and not so much of a, uh, you know, to talk about maybe my guitars, but, but uh, talk about problems that players have with their instruments mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I have a long experience and I, I, I have a very versatile view of, of things and I, and, I, and I like to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I know my that, friend yes. has been persuading me, and I've been I've been trying to avoid and avoid and avoid. I I don't know how how long, too long probably because, then last weekend we decided that okay now we're gonna try we're gonna do like a pilot, but it with the idea that if it if if it feels right, we would continue doing it, and and so we did the first two live stream episodes of of something that is now officially called the weekly Wednesday live Q&A. So, nice. so the next next one is coming tomorrow and we're going to talk about why doesn't my guitar or your guitar stay in tune. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. So I'm very excited about it. I, I loved it. And, 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 and honestly, the only, the only kind of critic I'm thinking of while, 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 doing it was that why on earth didn't i believe my friend earlier yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think that's the good thing of the situation we are going through is that it uh, it forces us to rethink how we work how we communicate and everything and uh, obviously not everybody did a great job at doing some live and uh, we see at the moment some musician trying to to do some live and sometimes the sound is not so good and so on but Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, myself, I've been doing a lot of lives recently since the beginning of the lockdown because the idea was exactly that, exactly that, to mm-hmm. to to showcase the musicians who are going through a very difficult time uh, at the moment, and uh, it yeah. was a, a learning curve to to make sure that uh, it was possible yeah. to do it, to have a good sound and good video and. Uh, and everything, and uh, I think that uh, it was uh, really good to have the some some nice uh, live chat with uh, the people. So and so, uh, obviously, it's not going to replace a, a guitar show. But you are happy about the overall uh, experience of the of the online yeah. edition, yeah? Yeah, yeah. My 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 mind is buzzing with all kinds of possibilities that this experience kind of opened my eyes for. I think you know it it's it's quite amazing well this event was in some ways for me personally it fe- felt kind of bizarre and 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 uh, and uh, chaotic in some ways because you know how to coordinate with all the content not 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 talking about maybe our content but the, but the as a Looking at it from the perspective of the organizer, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so how to how to kind of maneuver with all this, or should it be maneuvered? Should it more be like a flash mob, or should it be just like everybody does what they does what they do, and we just hashtag or whatever? But um, we we the situation now kind of forced us to let go of too much thinking, and we just had to kind of jump, and either we do it or we don't do it. Mm-hmm. So we decided, okay, let's just boom, let's just do it and see where where we land. And and I think from the feedback from uh, from my colleagues and how the show team, organizing team, and and how we feel about it, and and everybody, how how the feedback from the from the visitors. Um, it's all been very positive. Of course, some technical problems, not everything worked out great, but hey, it's it's a new thing. It's like a pioneer act and and um and very much outside the comfort zone for for a lot of us. Yeah. So in that regard, I think it was a great success and and even for business, business I think that for for us, we sold guitars, so Good. We, we're happy, and it's like a monetary zero expense. We don't travel anywhere, we, mm-hmm. so so all these kind of aspects are kind of you start thinking that hey, mm-hmm. what is the what is the best things that you can actually the kind of best aspects that you can achieve 
with an online thing like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what are the what are the kind of drawbacks? Obviously, the physical contact, the physical, you know, the seeing all the friends and and the community. It's just there's nothing can replace mm-hmm. the 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 live real thing. But but in some regard, if you think of the because a lot of a lot of being involved in the guitar business has nothing to do with money. It has to do with the passion and the kind of that you're you do what you love to do. Like for me, making guitars makes it possible that I don't need to get a job yeah. in some regard because it doesn't <laughs> feel like a job. It's yeah. my calling and it's my passion. Like for a musician, the musician doesn't need to go when he succeeds. He doesn't need to go to work in a factory and then do music. So I can live my passion and I don't need to. So this is, um, I think that for business side of things, uh, the online can even be better than the actual uh, event. The the for example the Holy Grail event or or other event like that. Whereas then the, it raises the question that some things are better to do online. While why not to concentrate on then to really bring out the how what is the best way when we can again meet each other mm-hmm. live face to face does this maybe this, does this kind of experiences change the future live events that we focus more into that passion and yeah. to that that side that mm-hmm. we all look for the community and the meeting everybody and maybe less business mm-hmm. and more guitar love yeah. or whatever it is called i don't know And, and for example, one thing that it was possible through the Holy Couch Guitar Show was to see even more uh, Luthier workshop. And that's obviously yeah. something you can do when you come to Berlin because you only see the guitar builder and the guitars, which is good. But yeah. uh, there were many lives uh, recorded uh, live from the workshop where the, the, the builder were actually walking around and showing, uh, yeah. showing their, their stuff. I did um, a live interview with uh, Leo Buendia from Oakland in San Francisco, uh, near California, yeah. near San Francisco. And, uh, and Sunday I did one with uh, Claudia and Claudio Pagelli in their Switzerland workshop. And it was awesome because they were moving around with their picture, with their exactly. camera yeah. and showing yeah. the, and that's something we, you cannot do uh, usually. So that's uh, an added value. I mean, even though we lose the fact that we can't actually touch the instrument and yeah. interact and listen to, to music, it is uh, something new. So uh, Yeah, and it, mm. it's, I think it's like in the future, this could be, It's kind of two sides of the coin. I mean, yeah. I mean, and 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 there's positive things in both, but but actually, either way has also some unique stuff that you can't replace with the other. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you said, I mean, you can't go to people's workshops like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and it's it's and also another aspect is that the very small percentage of the guitar lovers can ever go to Berlin live mm-hmm. to see the event. But this is something that. In the future, if it's developed and taken further, the potential is massive. Yeah, to and, reach the mm, guitar-loving people. Yeah, and all the content uh, that was produced during the weekend is uh, is there for the people to watch uh, to watch again, even though it's not live anymore. And uh, the live uh, workshop, the Q and A you did, and uh, and things like that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah that's, and I, um, I feel because we we did all our all our material. We just because we were. We weren't sure. Emma and I were thinking that, okay, so are we going to focus on Instagram? Are we going to focus on Facebook or YouTube? So, we, well, let's just upload our videos everywhere. Mm-hmm. So we have Instagram TV. All is Instagram TV. Everything is on Facebook page and everything on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Except with the exception that the live streams were done only in YouTube. Mm-hmm. But so now, after the show, we're kind of thinking that it's kind of, kind of cool that our contribution to the Holy Couch Guitar Show including with the commentaries to the videos. Um, they, they are there, and, and especially in YouTube, where, where we already created a Holy Couch Guitar Show playlist in chronological order, so our show is there. And, you know, for people to, to find and see and, and experience, and it's going to remain there. So it, it's really valuable, mm-hmm. especially, I think, in, in case of YouTube, where the the nature of the of the platform is not a timeline based thing but often like i experienced that we have certain videos from 10 years ago that still get hundreds of 
views per month. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and so on, so on. So it's uh, YouTube is a very very effective platform for that, yeah. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you have with you one of the guitars you should have brought to, to Berlin. Uh, it was, I think, part of the Reclaim the Wood uh, Challenge. So, and yes. you, uh, you produced a very nice video telling the story. So can you show the guitar and explain uh, what's, yeah. what's, special, uh, what's, special, what's so special about it? And what was yeah. the idea behind the Reclaim Wood uh, Challenge guitar? Yeah, so Reclaimed Wood Challenge, meaning that we have or everybody who participated the challenge, there was a lot of luthiers doing that, mm -hmm. similar projects on their sides. So um, the idea was that we have materials that have had a different purpose in the past. And then that purpose ceased to exist. And the material was maybe tossed away or is, is um, not, not, needed anymore mm -hmm. in its original purpose and you take that material and use it in a guitar so we for us this project started already back in when when we bought this this building that where i'm now sitting here in the office um, um it's a, it's a this place is called harvey Allen manor and and the building that we bought from the from the small town that owned owned these buildings this is the old stable building Um, and uh, built in 1896. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, the building had been here um, empty for quite a while, but the town had kept like basic heating here, so it was still, it was, it was okay, but, but not in a very good shape. Mm -hmm. and, and when we moved in 2011, we needed to do a big renovation to change the rooms to, for our needs, and then And along that process, we found certain materials that were quite interesting, and we saved them. Like this body, this the, the body of the guitar. It's made of an old floor beam from um, under our uh, wood storage floor. We need to do some strengthening under the floor, and we found this cutoff beam, this big chunk of wood, um, and we. We put it aside that maybe we can use it someday for something, and then uh, the neck wood is also it's from the from the roof construction where we did some changes there when we were installing our spray spray booth mm -hmm. equipment, and um, and I found from the cellar an old cross country ski from the 1930s, 1940s, something like that. This piece of birch, and during those days in Finland. The best, I mean, skis, cross-country skis were made of birch always. And okay. they were, and when you find these old skis, they're always the tightest grained, the straightest grained birch imaginable. Mm -hmm. Because in a, in a ski, it's very important that it stays straight. Yeah, you know? obviously, and, yes. and so, mm -hmm. so the carpenters or the ski makers who did it, they were very particular of the material. So anyway, I found this 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 key and that became the fretboard of the of the instrument awesome. and, <laughs> and there are some other parts like the the pick guard yes the pick guard is um it is wall, made of wallpaper laminated wallpaper ah, okay mm -hmm. that i found from um or we found from from one of our closets that we kind of were taking down some boards and then we found behind the boards this beautiful wall mm -hmm. wallpaper And we saved some pieces. We cut them out and put them aside. Yeah, let's let's use them. And, and so on and so on. I mean, everything else in this guitar except the pickups, the bridge, the tuners, um, the pots is reclaimed, reclaimed materials. Even the even the uh, the dots, they are rusty nails. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you explained that in the video. Yeah, that, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's funny because when we then got this guitar ready, we were all the time thinking that that it is guitar. It is a guitar for the reclaimed wood challenge uh, for the Holy Grail mm -hmm. 220, and that it is to be sold to someone. And then when we got the guitar finished and and we did that video about it, that you can find from our our, our YouTube channel, and actually yeah, on Facebook and Instagram TV. Um, 
and and when we were with my team watching that video then it kind of dawned to us that but how can we sell this instrument? yeah <laughs> this is part this of is, our story it's this, uh, yeah it's the mm. soul soul of this building it's mm -hmm. the voice of this building we can't we can't <laughs> sell this instrument it has to remain here where where its roots are and and so so i had already put it to our in stock page i didn't have a price visible but it was there available it might still be available on our facebook products listing or something but people sorry it's not for sale <laughs> <laughs> too late too late. <laughs> yeah so i i had to then kind of post an explanation that look i i received some requests for this guitar but We've actually decided not to sell it. So, and uh, are you going to build other guitars with reclaimed woods from the building, or it was I just a one-off? So. I yeah? think so. We can. We we still have some materials from this building, and in Finland, uh, this type of reclaimed beams or or especially old cross-country skis and things like this, they they can be found quite mm -hmm. easily. And and this is quite fascinating because not only the instrument has. Um, a particular um, feel to it because of because of the story. Yeah, of course. But yes. it also actually this instrument with the with the over hundred year old pine neck and pine body and birch, it's really still like rigid neck, even though it's made of pine. When it's so tight grained and it has a very special sound. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's hard to describe. I don't think we've made a guitar before that sounds quite like this, mm. and it's it's a great sound. I I love it, and so I'm. We we've also th been thinking that maybe. You know another way because this guitar is so meaningful to us. We don't want to sell it, but maybe, if if someone out there, a customer, a, a git you know a guitar lover, a guitar player, has his own past maybe his parents house or something you know somewhere meaningful old material that that is secure and old and and we, we know it's stable because it's been seasoning for long enough time <clears throat> so maybe that would be the the one way to approach this that you know you bring us your very special material for the fretboard or neck or and and you know maybe we can give your childhood home a voice yeah it's funny you you say that because uh, i know you know a good friend of mine uh, michael springer from from france and he's a great yeah. builder and he did something yeah. like that not so long Hello, ago Mikhail. yeah <laughs> Mikhail. love your work he did something like that uh, not so long ago uh, with uh, for one of his customers who is also a subscriber of the show by the way and i think the customer uh, hervé brought him um, a very old uh, trees that used to grow in his parents garden or something like that and exactly. m yeah. michael looked at the wood and said yes i can do a guitar out of that and it's a, gr a great project so yes it could be an interesting yeah. way to have a, a very special so. guitar and, yeah. and, and of course I'm, I'm aware of it that this is not we're not the first in the world making something there's lots of and and some some companies are maybe made you know some luthiers have made a, a career out of out of this type of ideas mm -hmm. and 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 maybe and i, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even know because I don't. I have so little time to follow what others are doing. We're, we're just doing what we're doing, and 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 yeah. But but I think the more luthiers are doing it, the better because the I also the concept <clears throat> and the idea of using reclaimed wood materials. It's it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's very powerful. Got, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a powerful statement mm -hmm. and also also very well suits to the time we live in where 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 i think the humankind is slowly awakening to the reality that consuming the way we have been consuming will come to an end sooner than later mm -hmm. and we should better start thinking of alternatives for that yeah and and consuming less is a good idea in every way that we can think about it. And this is one way to do it. Yes, definitely. And it, it reminds me also another of another guitar story I, I read about uh, Paul Whitsmith, 
when he started to do his uh, super high flame uh, top guitar, he, he was actually reclaiming wood from old furniture which were out of date and uh, not uh, in the fashion anymore. And he was taking some, uh, uh, you know, door from uh, furniture just to do make yeah. a guitar out of it. So it's a it's an yeah. old idea, but it's a very exactly. powerful one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So uh, before we talk some more about guitar, tell us what was the impact for you in your business, in your work as a guitar builder of the, the pandemic? I mean, uh, are you still building guitar or everybody's out of the shop? Or what's the situation for you? Well, we live here uh, sort of in the southern Finland, so not too far away from the civilization, but <laughs> but 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 kind of kind of still in the middle of nowhere on the countryside. Mm -hmm. So we have so we have lots of lots of more trees surrounding us than people. So we, we, there's not much people here, and and in these neighborhoods, the there hasn't been like a total lockdown like it, like okay. it has been in cities, and mm -hmm. so and this has enabled us to work pretty much normal. And we with my team, we we agreed that okay, let's let's step up with the whatever we can do with the hygiene hygiene washing hands and mm -hmm. and not hugging too much which mm -hmm. Finnish people don't do anyways okay <laughs> which I think is one actually explanations why in Finland the pandemic hasn't spread mm -hmm. in such in the same way as in certain other cultures where kissing on the cheeks and things it's normal culture but here no people are people have their private space yeah, is different bigger, culture, bigger yeah. than in other mm -hmm. countries yeah so so I think I think for us as all of us have have stayed healthy and we we decided that as long as we stay healthy nobody gets any kind of flu we'll just come to work we and and so far so good no nothing nothing has happened and also also um regarding um work situation mm -hmm. uh, i think it's uh, not at least any worse it's even i would say my i get more email because people have so much time now to sit at their computers and yeah yeah so more business their, uh yeah, came your way yeah. their time traveling mm -hmm. you know travel to thailand or or <laughs> wherever and other sides of the planet or spend their money to to going to restaurants and and so they they need to spend it somewhere maybe i don't know but uh yeah we're getting we're getting we've been getting orders and things look pretty pretty normal i think excellent that's good and yeah we are starting to have some question in the the chat room so, so there is one from Heyman, and he's asking who was the most demanding guitar player for whom you built a guitar and why oh this is a difficult one <laughs> <laughs> there's, been, there's been many dif uh, dif de demanding ones in different ways. Let me think. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I would say, I, I can't, I can't bring out now any specific, like, d demanding in in that sense of the word, but. One story could be, for example, quite telling about a bass player from Germany, Markus mm. Setzer. Oh, yeah. He, he was one of your demonstrators at the Holy Grail uh, guitar yeah. show, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And, Great and, player. And yeah. He's been playing our basses for, for a long time, and we are again working on a new project with him nice. that might, may have to do with the Valbucker mm. as well mm. for basses. But this is still on the on the design table and confidential, so don't tell it anybody that you heard. It won't get out of the internet. Don't worry. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, so, and actually, we're working with another base, another project with him as well. But um, but I could tell this. Uh, you just need to then zip me if I talk too much. But if I if this story <laughs> gets too long, but. But a uh, long, long time ago, we became friends with Marcus already back in year 2000 when I exhibited at music, uh, Frankfurt Music Messe for the first time. Mm -hmm. And this was because we, we both knew Magnus Krempel, uh, a German guitar maker, and we both um, 
we were accommodated at, at his place. So we, I was, I was totally broke, rookie guitar maker. I couldn't afford a hotel, so I, I, I stayed at, at, at a friend's place, and Marcus Setzer stayed there as well. And that's when we became friends. I didn't build bases at the time, mm -hmm. and we became really good friends with Marcus and Marcus's wife Sabine, and we've stayed friends ever since. And Every now and then, Marcus would ask me that, "Why don't you make a bass? And why don't you make a bass for me?" And I'm, I'm, I would tell him that, "Well, I don't have the capacity, and I'm not a bass player, so I, I feel so, I'm walking on thin ice with mm -hmm. with basses. So, if the situation changes, I will let you know." So Marcus approaches me time and time again and kicks my butt about it. That, why can't you make a bass? <laughs> For me to try and then eventually one of the luthiers that i hired he is a bass player and he wanted to make basses and in our workshop every instrument is made by one luthier from the beginning to the end so i thought that now maybe it's a good time this must have been in 2006 or seven i can't remember mm -hmm. could be i remember wrong but some something like that and and so we make our first uh, bass prototype and bring it to Frankfurt Music Messe uh, for for Marcus to try. And he doesn't try. He, he didn't want to try it at the show. He said, just just said that he's going to take it with him and, and try it at home and, and spend time with it. And one thing that triggered us kind of to want to make a base was the fact that we've been using um, thermally aged wood materials for, we're one of the pioneers in mm -hmm. this. So we've been using these materials since the turn of the millennium. And I was always intrigued about the thought that knowing what thermally aged materials do in an electric guitar, I was always thinking that it must be very cool thing in an electric bass. Mm -hmm because of the lower frequencies and because the instrument vibrates so much with the low frequencies and, and the, and the waveform is so big. And, and in this kind of an instrument, you, the, it's very, very crucial that the neck materials is, is rigid and you know, the, that it's strong bend strength. It doesn't vibrate too much to avoid dead spots on the fretboard and so on, blah, blah, blah. Any, all kinds of technical things that I felt intrigued about. And then, Marcus has took the bass, took it home, and then he called me some weeks later that this bass sounds amazing. That it's the it's a bolt-on bass with 34-inch uh, scale length, and it shouldn't sound this way. It should have these problems <laughs> here and these problems here, but this bass doesn't have it. Nice. How is it possible? Mm. And and then he continues. And the headstock looks like shit. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I, who designed I, that? <laughs> yeah, and, and and I I don't I don't quite like the pickups. They're not very bad, but they they they're not right. Mm -hmm. And I, we should really work on the pickups. And so okay, so I'm like, hey, Marcus, okay, let's let's <laughs> try to figure out. Okay, it's an ugly <laughs> ugly stupid headstock okay let's design a new headstock so but this is one way with a professional you know when there is that kind of what i'm trying to say here is that working with professional musicians that also are friends and we trust each other mm -hmm. this kind of this kind of confronting each other is possible yeah. and i don't need to take it <clears throat> personal because i can i know that this person likes me and you know and we are good friends and our relationship can take it mm -hmm. when the other one says that, look, you're offline. This is not good. <laughs> this is shit. <laughs> and, and so, so we, so, but this was great because afterwards, when I've been looking at that first prototype headstock, I agree with Marcus. Okay. It was stupid. It was too small. It looked like a baby bass head okay. because maybe <laughs> I'm a guitar builder and I didn't kind of figure it needs to be bigger, it needs to yes. be sort of bolder mm. and so and and also it started a very interesting project, uh, uh, pickup uh, research and development project because uh, what Marcus did was that 
he had the prototype base and the pickups were made by Harry Heusel. Mm -hmm. German pickup builder, yes. Mm -hmm. Jazz-based pickups. Not bad pickups, but particularly to Marcus's taste and to this base with our thermally aged materials, um, uh, Marcus felt that they need something. They need to be funkier. They need to have more dynamics. They need to have this and that. And so Marcus sent to me um, uh, like a like a diagram of what frequencies need to go down and what need to go up. Oh, it was that uh, Marcus precise. Is very particular. Okay. Marcus, mm-hmm. is, Marcus can say that, hey, 200 kilohertz this way, mm-hmm. you know, 2000 hertz that way, whatever. So it's, it's, that's what, how he, that's how he sees, he kind of sees music and he kind of, he's so deep and so kind of lives the music and recording and, and all that. He knows it inside out. And for him, it's clear when he plays the bass, he understands that, hey, it needs more here, more here, less here, and this and that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a little bit confused that, oh, how am I going to translate these frequencies into the into the pickup? Because that's and then okay, I I give Harry Hoysel a call that I got this email. I'm going to forward it to you now, and then then let's talk on the phone. And then Harry Hoysel <laughs> tells me that, but there's just coil and magnets in the pickups. How can we these particular frequencies? <laughs> I mean, we can. I have an idea how to make more mids and less bass or this and that. But how can we do? And so. So I suggest to Harry and to Marcus that, look, we just start making prototypes after mm-hmm. prototypes after yeah. prototypes mm-hmm. that Harry makes and sends to sends to um, Marcus. And then I think it took four or five sets of, of pickups before Marcus gave me that telephone call that I had been looking forward and, and <laughs> praying for <laughs> I, I don't know how long at that time, but but then he told me these are these are great, these are perfect, these are wonderful, these are great. So I think that's the that's the kind of challenge I like. Mm-hmm. It's when when and, and it has happened with guitarists as well. And I'm the first person to always admit my guitar is never perfect, and it's never you know. W- w- when, when a new customer comes in and a professional player who really knows what he's talking about, who really understands instruments, um, that's for me always the, it's, it's, it's often a challenge, but when then eventually overcoming the challenge and succeeding, it every time makes me and makes my team stronger and, mm-hmm. and better at what we do. Yeah. There is someone in the chat room who is asking about uh, the story with uh, Sonny Landreth. I think you, uh, he, he was playing in Finland and he, his guitar were lost, something like that. And you, you yeah. lent him an instrument and then it started a conversation between you, right? Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's quite funny because at the time when um, Sonny Landreth was playing in, in, in Finland at the summer festival, blues festival, um, I didn't know. I had never met. I had never been communicating anything with Sonny Landreth, and I was at that time um, visiting our friend, friend Fred Guitars, Francisco. Mm-hmm. Yes, hello, Francisco. How are you doing? Hey, yeah. Fran and Rosa. From Spain. So yeah. we were visiting them, and we were taking a little walk—not the whole walk, but the the El Camino, the pilgrimage road. So we were on this ancient pilgrimage road with Fran and Rosa, Emma and I were there, and I get a telephone call. Today, this is Sonny Landreth calling, I'm from in Finland now, and and, <laughs> and, and I'm like, what? And, <laughs> and, and he, he explains to me that he has been following my career for a long time, since um, the first article in the American little magazine or website well it's it's lo- more like a magazine um called tone quest report mm-hmm. they had written about us a long long time ago maybe 10 years ago 10 years earlier 15 years earlier i can't remember um a, a, a really in-depth article and sonny tell, told me that he has been following kind of me on and off since then 
and and he's dying to try one of my guitars and now the situation is that the airline has lost mm -hmm. their that gear was story, yeah. and mm -hmm. could it be possible that i would i could i could lend him something for the for this show and and i'm saying to him that look um I'm, <laughs> yes sure but uh, you know I'm what here yeah. in spain right now but <laughs> I mean, northern Spain, and and let but me see I, what I can I do for you. Yeah, this. and this this gig was having uh, happening the same evening. Yes, so he called course. me in the morning. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so so I I called around to my friends, and then the beautiful guitar loving friends, people, my cousin Sami and and uh, another guitarist Eria Lutinen, a Finnish blues player woman. Oh yeah, very mm -hmm. very particular great guitarist. She helped me out to hook up with the right people from the festival, so we could get an access to their hotel. So I got the access to the to the person to the per, to the to the show manager, so we can uh, we don't need to worry about this kind of formalities, and we get the guitar delivered. So I could organize one guitar that was held by a foundation. In Helsinki, they kind of lease out guitars or rent guitars to professional players to to sessions. Cool. Um, so it's a small organization like that, and they ordered a guitar from me um, some time earlier, and we had just delivered that guitar not a long time before Sony was in Finland, and so I gave them a call that could they maybe. Could that guitar be used by Sonny Landreth today at the Puisto Blues, the Lakeside Blues Festival mm -hmm. in Finland? By so yeah, so and they were that yeah okay sure if you can just arrange somebody to pick it up. So one of my customers picked it up from them, took it to the festival, and Sonny played a um, big part of the gig, gig. They actually got their guitars back by the gig, so so he didn't play the whole gig with it, mm -hmm. but he played a lot of songs with it. And then he asked me after the gig that, so how much? Okay. Like, oh, this guitar is not for sale. It's not. It's oh, not sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's not my instrument. It's owned by this foundation. Blah blah blah. So Sony is like, oh, bummer. I really love the guitar. And so I'm like, I'm really sorry, but it's not my guitar. So it kind of ended there for a little while. Until, because I suggested. Sonny, that maybe we can build you something. Mm, sure. And he was like, "Yeah, but mm -hmm. you know, it's it, that guitar was so great," and he was disappointed. And then, then, um, sometime later, I think it was a week or two later, he sent me another email. Are you sure you can't sell that? Guitar? <laughs> Steal <laughs> it! I don't him. care. Steal it! I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know can about you, it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you ask the people, you know, who own it? Can, you know work out something i want that guitar mm. <laughs> and so, so so in the end um i worked out a plan where i sold that same guitar twice wow <laughs> good business so, yes <laughs> i think i'm gonna make this is business model i'm gonna sell the same guitar <laughs> over and over again <laughs> but yeah so so i i i agreed with the foundation in finland music in edistami satya thank you very much Thank you very much for for being so very kind for me that you know this guitar will be sold to Sony Ra Landreth. They were so excited about the story of it. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that sure. Guitar it's a good story, yes. Course. Yeah, so mm -hmm. obviously. So so um we agreed with them that that we will make them we will prioritize them and make them a new instrument as fast as we possibly can and and, and this instrument will go to Sony and that's it. Nice. That's all one great story. Always uh, some cool <laughs> stories with you. Uh, you are that, that's great. Uh, so now that the Holy Couch Guitar Show is over, uh, when do you think it's going to be the next uh, guitar show for you? Are you are you going to be at the Guitar Summit in Mannheim or the next Winternam? Or have you changed your mind about that yet? I have to say that under these circumstances that we're now facing. Mm -hmm. I have no clue. Okay. We have no commitments right now. And I think I, at this very moment, I would just say that we keep the options open. Well, mm -hmm. whether what is going to be the next, 
we definitely want to do a show again, like where we go f- for real. Yeah. <laughs> but but where and when is that going to be? I don't know. I mean, it's it's clear that. Well, hoping that by the autumn, but this is so you know all the speculations. Yeah. You start fo- you know thinking about this too much, this current situation, and speculating the future coming months. You know, it makes you crazy because we just can't know. So I've I've decided we've decided with my team that let's just look at the situation mm-hmm. one day at a time, week at a time, and you know, played by the ear. Yeah. So mm-hmm. be. I think that's the best we can do at the moment because the yeah, yeah. we don't know exactly. Uh, when it's going to be the actual end of that? Uh, when are we going to be able to go out again to go to big festival? Uh, yeah. uh, will there be an, an, uh, some? Yeah, uh, what will be the, the future? We don't know. Especially traveling to the United States. Yeah. I mean, this mm. is the 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 way the pandemic has been developing there. It's like a, it's so unfortunate, and mm-hmm. we have so much great friends on that side of the pond, and our. I'm sure our all our sympathies go with them, and and this is, this is, and we we for example we have lot, lots of customers, good friends, close friends, colleagues, in New York, and man, this is horrible, and we, and um, just hoping and praying that this will pass as as, as pass sooner than later. Yes. Sure. Uh, I wanted to to thank you, you are because uh, you have been a long time uh, paying subscriber of the show. So for me, it means a lot to have a wonderful master builder like you supporting the work I do. I do on the guitar channel. Uh, we recorded a, a while ago uh, a series of uh, chronicle. In fact, it, we, we we did that yeah. through Skype, but uh, it's a content that is still available on the guitar channel dot biz or on lashenguitar.com. And uh, hopefully one day, and we talked about that in the past, but uh, I would love to come to your workshop and do a full oh. tour and uh, uh, get to, to know you welcome. and a uh, li- little bit better. But until then, I can and can say that uh, yeah, there are a lot of awesome content on your on your YouTube page, and uh, I really enjoyed the fuck ups uh, video that you just published, which was really funny. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did. Yeah, a yeah. Lot of people- I read some of the comments. They're saying that now I feel much better about my work. Okay. <laughs> the, you know, people felt so relieved, you know, that, oh, yeah, this is, you know, because this is where this is happens to everybody. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I want to say one thing about about that, you know, being your subscriber. I feel it as a as a privilege and, and I feel it as a responsibility. Almost you're doing great job. And for you Thank there, you. Mm-hmm. watching this, this <laughs> on Facebook, <laughs> you'd best you know, you'd better not, subscribe right a, now. <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, you should become one. <laughs> for real, yeah. I, I, and I mean it. I mean, Pierre is doing great job, and and in the changing world with the changing um, 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 logistics of how everybody is, you know, making the ends meet. Um, support his work. He's yeah. doing a great job for the com- community and for the guitar-loving people. So mm. that's that's what I wanted to say. It a has... lot of great content on his channels. Thank you very much uh, for saying that, uh, Yuan. It's been a, a, an incredible amount of work to to build La Chaine Guitar, to build the, the guitar channel, but such a, a re- rewarding uh, project too, because uh, it allows me to tell some incredible stories. Whereas I am, if I'm talking to guitar builders, but also with musicians to to do some live report from the Holy Grail guitar show. I, I remember the very first Holy Grail guitar show was 2014, right? The 2014. Yeah, and I remember I heard about it like maybe two two years before, and I say right away, yeah, for sure, I will be there. I will jump on a plane and come and. Uh, it allowed me to to meet some incredible uh, guitar builders that uh, basically never came to France or to Europe before. You know the the exactly. Michael Greenfield, Jason Costal, and um, and people like that. The people from Japan, from all over the place. So uh, I have to congratulate you uh, back back to you to all the job you do. Not only as a great guitar builder, but also as a great mastermind and. Uh, 
uh, organizer and member of the European European Guitar Builders Guild Association because uh, thank you. it's, thank it's you. really thank some you great much. event. This is, this is with the ETB, European Guitar Builders Association, and what we've done with, with the Holy Grail Guitar Show and all that. Um, thank you for all the all the compliments and everything. This is this is a collaborative work that none of us who found the association who who, who have come come later joined later to the group mm -hmm. and are actively participating this is this would be totally impossible alone for anybody and it's it's a collaborative work and and it shows the the power of people working together towards towards a goal and and um and i'm very happy that we did it and e even though now with this this situation with the grand finale becoming Uh, some sort of a grand fiasco yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then turned into the holy couch guitar show and you know saving some of it and and salvaging some of it reclaiming some of it mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak and um you know and the future whatever the future brings i would say that the the most valuable thing the ETB has done is that it has brought together the guitar makers and the players, the guitar loving community from everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean that's the kind of that's the kind of thing that that uh, that sometimes it can go I've heard some like from from someone criticizing the Holy Grail show being somehow It's so much art guitars and so much like all this high end and sort of this uh, like a jewelry store or something. It's not about rock and roll. It's not this kind of sometimes, not too much, but sometimes somebody criticizing. And I think these people are, they, they're overlooking what is the real value of this kind of an event. Because obviously the, the content of the event, it is what the what the exhibitors are bringing and 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 showing and in that regard it's every year different but what has remained the same and strengthened over like year by year by year is the fact that that people understand that this is actually it's nothing to do with really with business and with money it's about finding our tribe and our family and people the like-minded people Mm -hmm. That it just feels so <clears throat> relaxed and peaceful to be with. Yeah, and create and some cool the, project, the local wood challenge project, the reclaim wood project, uh, and it has created a lot of. It had a lot of impact on other shows like uh, the Winter Nam and like the Guitar Summit and so on. And also, mm -hmm. you know, I've been organizing a guitar show in France, and I stole some uh, some ideas from the Holy Grail Great. Guitar Show because good. I thought it was some very good uh, ways to, to showcase the, the guitar builders and, and, and so on. So, uh, and uh, still, I haven't been at your show, but the day will come. I'm, okay. I'm confident. Excellent. I'm hoping, I'm wishing. <laughs> yes. We have a strange uh, Mika Tiska saying hi on the chat room. So Mika, hey, how are you doing? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Fastfinger. Fastfinger. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what Mr. Fastfinger is called in Finland? No. His name is Herra Pikanakki. Okay, which means which means It kind of means Mr. Fastfinger, but if you're if you know Finnish, you know otherwise it's pretty difficult impossible to okay. <laughs> translate. It, it's kind of that, but funnier okay <laughs> i have to work on my finish the only thing i can yeah. say in the read in the video you know i did uh, i have at the moment in my house the the valve bucket the duke valve bucket you you sent me and i did the unboxing and the only thing i know about finish is that uh, your first name is pronounced you are not a joa so that's the uh, basically the only thing i need uh, i know so uh, i need to work on that <laughs> but You just need to say it more seriously because Finnish people are very serious okay. people. So you need to say, you are. You are. Yeah, yes. like, with right. the scary look on my face. Now okay. it sounds like Finnish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to remember that when I record the full video uh, <laughs> with uh, the guitar and uh, with some amps in my showroom. Uh, if people want to, to see, uh, to get more information about what you do, order a guitar from you, what's your website and, and everything uh, you are. Yeah, go to rokangas.com, mm -hmm. go to our Facebook profile, go to our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, it's all there. And 
remember to su subscribe to his channel, to our channel, to all these YouTuber things. Like the videos, share with your friends, do all this YouTuber stuff. All right. You are, uh, again, it was uh, always a great pleasure to have you. It's even better when we are sitting right next to, to each other and doing the, the live interview. But uh, you are such a good uh, storyteller that it is always a pleasure. So thank you again very much for your time and for telling some cool uh, guitar stories. Thank you very thank much you. for the people you, who uh, uh, were watching this. And this video will be also available after that on, on YouTube and as well in uh, audio podcast because... Uh, we can he listen to you are while running around and doing the dishes and, and that's everything. the thing that you've been telling me to do also for years yeah a podcast, podcast is good yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh. yeah but all the content you produce you know the live uh, I maybe know, the i know i know i know we I, i've just forgotten about it yeah yeah okay i must talk to emma about it let me know if you need some information about uh, putting online the podcast i will be more than happy to yeah. to help <laughs> great Thank you very much, uh, Yua, and uh, I hopefully I will see you uh, in not, uh, not such a distant uh, future. And uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for um, trusting me with the precious v v valve bucket duke that I have at the moment uh, here, and that have I'm fun. very happy to to play with it. Have fun. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, people. Stay see you. Safe. Bye bye. Stay, stay home safe. and stay yeah, safe. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Pour le prix d'un magazine, abonnez-vous à la chaîne Guitar pour accéder aux vidéos intégrales. For the price of a magazine, subscribe to The Guitar Channel to access the full videos.